This video is sponsored by Premium Sound, one of the UK's premier dealers located in Kensington, London, with an online store carrying a comprehensive inventory to cater for a variety of needs. For more details, click the link in the description. What's up with these YouTubers launching their own products? Personally, I have no issue with it as long as they don't use their review sites to promote their own brands. That would be a direct conflict of interest. It wasn't long ago that I reviewed the CSS Typhon speakers, a J. Lee concept designed and implemented by the guys at Creative Sound Solutions. Now it's Thomas's turn that many of you will know from his YouTube channel, but Thomas has gone a little bit further by launching his own brand using OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, in this case Dodge Audio. The Galleon TS120 is the first product that Thomas has brought to market. I'm reviewing the SE version, and just for the record, I have no tie-in with Thomas, nor does he have any influence over what I'm about to say. The TS120 SE is sold directly from the Galleon Audio website for $4,495, $1,000 more than the standard version. It's a full rack width, hefty unit weighing 30 kilograms or 46 pounds. The chunky build, matte finish and contoured edges impart a sense of quality, almost as if the Galleon amp was constructed from stone. The amp relies upon a pair of 12AT7 and another pair of 12AX7 dual triode tubes for the preamp section. They can be interchanged with the less common ECC83 and 702S tubes. A set of four KT88C pentode power tubes come as standard from PS Vein. They can also be swapped or tube rolled as it's commonly referred to for 6550s or even KT120s. It takes about 30 seconds for the Galleon amp to go through its warm-up procedure, but naturally it takes quite a bit longer for everything to get up to optimal temperature. The TS120 SE can either run in Class A mode producing 30 watts per channel or Class AB producing 50 watts per channel into an 8 ohm load. I'll go through how to change the bias in the setup section. All the dials have a smooth and satisfying resistance to them. When the sound profile is set to T, there are adjustments for the bass and treble, but the tone controls are usefully taken out of the signal path when either sound profile A or B are selected. The TS120 SE has a home theatre input to use with an AVR and four line level inputs. An additional $95 will buy you a cage to protect the tubes, or I should say to protect yourself from the tubes as they do run very hot. It is necessary to meet safety regulations in some countries. An all aluminium remote control does come as standard though. On the rear is a bank of single-ended RCA connections for the inputs, a tape loop, as well as the dual subwoofer outputs. The layout of the speaker binding posts is unconventional, with the left channel terminal sitting above the right. The TS120 SE has both 4 ohm and 8 ohm taps flanking the neutral connection. The Galleon TS120 SE has been designed to be a versatile device. It has two modes of operation, two sound profiles, tone controls and plenty of tube rolling options. So let's start with the stock PS Vane KT88C tubes running the Galleon amp in Class AB. It sounds good, balanced tonality across the bass, mid and highs, reasonable clarity and decent grip and control over the speakers, but for four and a half grand, I'm not that impressed to be honest. In fact, if anything, my Wilsonton R8 delivers all of that and a bit more authority for about a third of the price, and that's with a full set of upgraded tubes. I have the PS Vane KT88 T2 collection tubes on the power stage, CV181s from the same collection for the driving stage, and recently just changed to Tungsol 6SL7s on the preamp stage. I need to do a little bit more AB listening between the stock 6SL7s and the tungstals before I update you with my findings on the Wilsington R8, but my initial impression is that the tungstals are a little bit smoother than the stock Wilsington tubes. Switch the Galleon TS120 SE from Class AB to Class A mode and the performance improves considerably. Now you're talking, the resolution of this amplifier is much better running in Class A, the leading edges of notes have a clean but not overly etched nature and there's this sense of transparency 
which shows up in things like timbrel information and the decay structures of notes, that simply eludes my Wilsington R8 even with upgraded tubes. Given the price disparity, the Galleon amp should sound better, and does. So what about using the sound profiles? The tone controls should only be used to make bad recordings palatable and as a band-aid for poorly balanced systems. They do impact on sound quality. Choosing between higher feedback sound profile A and lower feedback sound profile B is a matter of personal taste and down to equipment matching. Sound profile A has the most even tonality, a weighty bass, full sounding mid-range and a top end that sits beautifully in balance with the rest of the frequency range. In Class A and Profile A, I consider the performance to be on a par with my Hegel H190, both having relative strengths and weaknesses. The TS120 SE has great bass control for a tube amplifier, but isn't going to hang on to a rhythm as successfully as the solid state Hegel. The H190 also has a wider soundstage, but the Galleons is considerably deeper, and it also has a slightly harmonically richer mid-range. Switching from sound profile A to sound profile B is interesting. The lower feedback setting results in resolution and timing improving even further. It shows up in things like a wider and deeper soundstage with more precise imaging and better instrument separation. The way in which notes fall away is simply exquisite. Unfortunately, the tonality also changes and is tilted a little bit upwards with a lighter bass, slight bit of leanness to the mid-range and high frequencies more emphasized. With slightly bright recordings, it can occasionally sound a bit sibilant. In a lot of ways, I'm reminded of the Accuphase E280 that I reviewed. It retails for near enough 5,000 pounds in the UK. The E280 also has excellent timing with a similar sonic character. Thomas also sent me some other power tubes to try out. The Mullard KT88s aren't available on Thomas's website, so I'm guessing they must be from his personal collection. There are pluses and minuses. The Mullards are organic sounding tubes that deliver greater bass weight and a smoother and fuller mid-range, more of the sound that people would expect from a vintage tube amplifier. But the stock PS Vane KT88s are cleaner and crisper sounding. The other power tubes that Thomas supplied were a set of Shu Zhuan KT88Z tubes that are available on the Galleon website for an additional $195. The Shuzhuan sits sonically right in the middle between the more warm and rich sounding Mullards and the more dry and analytical sounding PS Veins. I wouldn't say any of these tubes sound better than the others, it's just different flavours of presentation. And it's that old classic trade-off between acoustic mass and resolution. If you're unsure of which ones to go for, I'd say that the Shuzhuans are your safest bet. A bit of housekeeping, most tube amplifiers have output transformers. There are designs without them, but they aren't that common. The Galleon TS120, the Wilsington R8, and 95% if not 99% of the tube amplifiers that you will encounter will have output transformers. and They should not be powered up without speakers attached. The reason is that the energy in the primary coil has nowhere to go when there's no load attached to the secondary coil so the transformer can produce potentially dangerous high voltage peaks. Also, if you're swapping tubes, don't have anything playing on the input until you've correctly biased the tubes. If the new tubes have a lower bias than the old tubes, there's the potential not only to damage the tubes, but the amplifier as well. The Galleon TS120 SE has a microprocessor based auto biasing circuit for the power tubes. The other tubes do not require user bias adjustment. You'll need to rebias the power tubes every time you switch between Class A or Class AB, and also if you change the tubes. It's a simple process. Press the change button, select the desired mode, Class A or Class AB, and then press the bias button. The microprocessor will take care of the rest. It may cycle through the lights a couple of times, changing between red and blue, before permanently settling on blue. So make sure you don't press the change button too early to exit the process. Wait until the bias LED has gone off. The TS120 SE has a lot of flexibility with its modes of operation and cost-effective tube rolling options. Of course, you can spend a fortune on rare new old stock tubes if you wish, but there are plenty of KT88 sets available for two to three hundred pounds. 
I wouldn't recommend a tube amplifier for anybody who listens to a lot of music with heavy crescendos. For this kind of money, good solid state power is always going to have better grip over the woofers. But that aside, the TS120SE will work well with a wide variety of speakers. The first speakers I tried were the CSS Typhons that I recently reviewed. They're sold direct for $5,500. The Typhons deliver excellent bass but have a somewhat dark and warm nature. Running in Class A and Sound Profile B, the Galleon amplifier is a little bit incisive and bright which nicely balances the CSS speakers and keeps reasonable control of the bass. Not bad for a 30 watt Class A tube amplifier driving two 7 inch woofers. My Amphion Argon 1s at 1500 pounds in the wood finish might seem like a price mismatch, but bear in mind that their floor standing brethren retail for 3300 pounds and the three LSs have essentially the same parts. Actually, the Argon 1s make a really good starting point for this amp. Easy to drive speakers with good detail is exactly what suits the TS120SE. That doesn't mean that it can't drive something more demanding like my Prark Response 1 SCs that will test the power supply of an amplifier. The TS120SE measures up because the soundstage opens up and I can really tell how accomplished this Galleon amplifier is in the mid-range by its ability to preserve details. Tubes and horns are a classic combination so I couldn't resist hooking up my JBL 4309s that retail in Blighty for £1,899. Those speakers have a wonderful party trick of making music come alive without ever sounding bright or aggressive. Here I preferred the Galleon running in Class A with Sound Profile A, and that's the higher feedback setting, which is a little bit softer and ideally suited the JBLs. There's no amplifier that's all things to all people, but Thomas, working with the team at Dodge, has ensured that the Galleon TS120SE is going to be well received by as many people as possible. It's superbly put together. Running in Class A it will deliver great levels of detail with finesse and more than acceptable levels of control, leaving you likely to find a setting that will suit you and your system. Bass heads and headbangers look the other way. This amplifier is not for you. The TS120SE won't drive any speaker, but it will drive most speakers well. It's its overall sonic abilities and flexibility that makes it a very compelling proposition for the price. The Galleon TS120SE gets a highly recommended from this channel. When I reviewed Jay's speakers, I asked viewers what features would they include if they were designing their own speakers. Well, let's open that up to amplifiers. Please let me know in the comments section what you would include if you were designing your own amplifier and the reasons why, and it doesn't have to be anything technical if you don't want it to be. Anything goes. All that remains for me to say is if you like what I'm doing, you want to see this channel grow, and assuming you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Check me out on Patreon, there's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon for some great ways to interact with me and fellow Patreons. But for today, for now, the British audiophile, signing off.